Welcome to part five of our Winter Maze Challenge. My name is Denson Siame and I'm joined by Mrs. Mwamba. Good morning. Today's focus, Mrs. Mwamba, is on uh, the importance of uh, scouting for disease, pests in your field. Mm -hmm. And I would also want to hear your feedback on uh, the, our advice for the staggered uh, planting dates. So for the initial planting uh, of uh, 6th uh, June, which is the, the, the crop right beside us, on the nutrition part for this particular crop, uh, Mrs. Mwamba, I can uh, definitely tell you that on the nutrition part for this crop, we are done. So the only follow-up activities, of course, will be, like you rightly mentioned earlier when we started, the scouting for pests and diseases and continued uh, management. The second thing is, of course, uh, uh, managing of your, of your weeds. We, we know that weeds compete for nutrition, they'll compete for water and they compete for space with your crop. So the weeds need to be managed from the, from the initial stage of the crop all the way up to, up to the time that you, you'll be able to harvest. The third one that you need to manage is of course your, your irrigation and already that is sorted out for you from our, our Sydney app as we have an irrigation schedule which you can easily follow and uh, you'll be able to to get that 150,000 kwacha that we are, we are aiming for in this challenge. And Mrs. Mamba, I think when we started uh, uh, this project, we did advise that uh, you stagger your planting dates. I think the first crop was planted on the, on the 6th of June. Yes. What, would be your, what has been your experience uh, with the staggered dates? Yeah. Um, our first crop, which was planted on the 6th, we, we did notice um, some strain in the fact that uh, it took very long for the germination to happen and even the crop itself was growing quite slowly. So we did panic a bit, actually. I think you remember we were back and forth and saying, look, it's not coming up, what's going on and everything. Um, so obviously, because I guess because of the cold, it was uh, looking like it was stunted. But as it started getting warmer, we noticed that the crop was actually starting to thrive as well. For the staggering for us has helped us very, very much because first of all, we are going through a learning process and, uh, and that in itself has helped us to be able to latch into the lessons that we're getting from, from our partners, uh, SIDCO. But then also, uh, it also helps us with crop management because then you know at what stage which crop is and you know how to, you know, to be able to manage it. And I think also on cost, I will talk about cost. Because if I stagger my crop, I'm not buying a whole load of uh, inputs at the same time. It's helped me to be able to manage my, uh, my costs as well, because then I'm not buying everything at the same time. So I think it's much easier for small scale farmers to be able to manage their costs if the crop is spread out. And especially, I mean, if you go into harvest on one side, you're able to feed the other side. So I guess it was a very good idea. And I think it's a practice that I will take up right now and, uh, and be able to just use it all the time. So thank you very much for that. Yes, Mrs. Mamba, you mentioned that uh, in the initial phases, especially on the uh, 60th of June planting, because we were, we were actually in the thick of the cold or the winter season where we, we ambient as well as soil temperatures were quite low. That's why you experienced the firstly uh, delayed germination because uh, for, for a, a seed to actually imbibe moisture and germinate it needs good temperatures of above uh, 12 degrees uh, Celsius. So uh, again on the uh, uh, stunted growth that is also expected especially for winter planted uh, uh, crop because we know uh, maize is, is, is a tropical uh, crop which, is, which thrives mostly in the summer season. Mm. So when you grow it in winter, you expect stunted uh, growth because of the nutrient uptake is actually quite very slow, especially uh, the element, uh, the key element or primary ele element, uh, which is phosphorus. You, you get, the phosphorus will be available in your soil, but mm. it will not be available for the plant to take up in, in order for it to actually have uh, 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 fast uh, growing as well as, as, as well as elongation. Um, okay, um, I think like I pointed out before, our crop feeding practices were way out based on what we've done so far. I mean, we, we've seen how, um, you know, Sitco came in and have supported us on how to feed 
the maize crop and I think if you just look at the results you can see that definitely there's a difference in the way we've been feeding our crop and what we now have. Uh, so at planting we went in with uh, the basal fertilizer and uh, we then went in with the top dressing but it was like after three weeks because we had a bit of a slow growth so we couldn't exactly do it at the time that we were supposed to do it but however with um, the support of, uh, of our friends we were able to now start feeding the crop and we, we had to come in with um, ammonium sulfate uh, that was the second part that was in in the third week and then after that is when now we come and put in the urea uh, that is normal practice for everyone for us normally we would have just gone uh, gone to look for a compound d not knowing what the you know the components are and we would have started with that and then after a, a, a few weeks we would have then gone in with urea but what we were missing out was obviously the ammonium sulfate which was was a requirement based on the soil tests that were conducted on this specific field. So I think that was important for us as well and it's very eye-opening for us because now we are aware what our crop needs and what and when it needs it. So from Mrs. Mwamba's uh, soil analysis report, the required top dressing amount was 250 kgs. So we, we decided that these 250 kgs needed to be split or divided in two equal parts, which the first part was 125 kgs of ammonium sulfate, which was to be applied at uh, two weeks after emergence, and then urea at 125 kgs per, per hectare as well, which was supposed to be applied uh, four weeks after emergence. Yes, um, so we, we've been following the app, obviously, so it's given us guidance on the need for scouting for pests and for, for diseases. So it's something that we do every day. Um, one of the, uh, the team walks through to check on the, on the maze and see what, what's uh, happening to it. We did have um, an attack of armyworms and uh, we noticed that we needed to move very quickly. And obviously we called on, on you guys to, you know, to find out exactly what we can do specifically to be able to mitigate the risk of losing the crop uh, through the pests. And uh, so we got some advice from, from you and uh, you advise us to use uh, two different pesticides so that we can have uh, a different effect on each, on each one of them. One of the, of the, the pesticides we used was um, denim fit and the other one was belt. So we basically were alternating um, the spraying of, of that. And we found that it was very helpful and we were able to, you know, to contain um, the attack of armyworms and our crop has continued to thrive, as you can see from the back. Uh, and uh, we're, very, we're very, very happy and thank you very much for your support. Oh, that's wonderful. So our uh, Sydney app, like Mrs. Mamba said, has uh, an application where a scouting tool where you're able to record and all your scouting data is on your app and on your phone and ready for use anytime in the field. So uh, Mrs. Mamba were coming from a very dry year so that particular effect has uh, uh, that particular aspect has an effect on your on your crop and that's why it's very important to to continue with uh, with your scouting. Ideally in a in winter, you do not expect to have um, an increased amount or number of uh, uh, four armyworm attacking your field. But because we're coming from a dry year, the, the rest of the foliage out where it's not being irrigated is quite dry, and uh, you ha you have the all the moths focusing only on your field because this is where they can uh, uh, get the food from. So what is important is re really to look out for egg clusters. Egg clusters in your on on your leaves will look like. Uh, fuzzy uh, spots in your leaves and then these obviously hatch into the initial larvae who start feeding on your on your on your on your maize. So the other aspect that you need to look out for when you're doing your scouting for armyworm is what we call uh, windows on your leaves. These are patches on your leaves that show that there's been uh, uh, that there's been uh, these are the windows on your leaves that shows that there's been actually uh, uh, for armyworm feeding on your leaves and this tells you because this already is, is, is a threshold for you to come in and uh, 
start your, your sprays like you have actually uh, said. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, we, we've noticed that at first I thought it was maybe the chemical or something that was sitting on the leaf. Uh, but after being advised that those patches are actually eggs, so what we're now trying to do is to target the patches, especially where the eggs are, so that we ensure that those eggs are not hatched. Or even if they are hatched, they are not uh, spread and they're not growing very quickly. So I think that's uh, as much as you can do really, because these things are there every time. So you have to keep uh, keep watch of your crop. You have to keep going back, scouting every single day because you might have missed a spot and you'll find that if you leave it for like five, six days, you'll find that the eggs have already um, hatched and they're already spreading. So, yeah, so that's what we've been doing. That's, that's really great. And uh, I think from our advice that we had uh, given you on the alternating of the two chemicals that you've actually been using is basically for you to avoid uh, pest resistance yeah. and so you need to change the, the two different chemicals because they have two different modes of action but the good thing is both of them are actually systemic and you get a prolonged uh, control in your field. Yeah um, I mean we've just yeah like you've said we've just finished our last feeding on this one so i'm breathing i'm like i don't need to get any more fertilizer and uh, obviously what we've uh, encouraged our people to do is to just keep looking at the weeding and also looking at uh, irrigation management as you know we do have issues with power so our irrigation is done at night because that's when we actually have a, a continuous spot of power so basically what, what happens is that it's good to feed at night as well because then the water is not um, evaporating very quickly. So what we're doing now is just concentrating, focusing mostly on, on the feeding on this one. We have two other crops that we've done beyond this and this one we've managed on our own because now we've learned what we need to do and what the practices are.